members of the class of 69 and parents, this is as close as they come to hanging the president. <laughs> One man who was a college president prayed, Lord, thou knowest I am an evil, help me to be a necessary one. It's my very pleasant duty to welcome you to Augsburg College and to make this welcome official. But before I do that, I want to uh, introduce, if he hasn't been introduced already, uh, our new Dean of Students who has been presiding here, uh, Dean Johnson. And uh, we're happy for his part in the administrative team here at Augsburg College. I uh, don't know whether they have uh, dedicated uh, the Oklahoma song, the Surrey with the fringe on top, to him or not. Um, <laughs> Glenn and I are much alike. <clears throat> when we go to the barber, we only get fringe benefits. <laughs> but I want to congratulate him and his cohorts in the splendid job which they have done to arrange for this welcome week. I think without a doubt this institution has one of the finest opening orientation uh, sessions of any college and I think we can be very grateful for those who have given leadership to this particular effort. I hope you're enjoying the Western welcome that we've been getting. It's been a warm welcome, I am sure. As I said, this is an official welcome and I would invite you on behalf of Mrs. Anderson and myself to come to our home next Sunday afternoon and be welcomed more informally. We look forward to this event every year to have the freshmen at the president's residence. Now, <clears throat> I have heard it said over and over again today that uh, the students who have come to be with us are excited, uh, they're nervous, they're a little anxious, and I've heard parents say that they're more anxious and more nervous than the freshmen. I suppose mother is even more concerned about whether her son can wash his shirt than whether he can get an A in zoology. But I would submit to you that we who receive this class are just as nervous, just as excited, just as filled with trepidation as you are. When I think of the expectations and the anticipations of this group before me, I'm just plain scared. My knees are applauding. <laughs> because it's a tremendous responsibility to have to seek, by the grace of God, to fulfill these high expectations and this tremendous anticipation that one senses after having mixed among you for these last few hours. We have been looking forward to this day. We've been thinking about you. We have been planning for you. We have been praying for you. And now you are here, the class of 1969. And this gives you a kind of special place in our hearts and in our plans because you will bear a designation that is unique. You bear, as the class of 69, the designation the Centennial Class at Augsburg College. God willing, this institution will celebrate 100 years in education for service in 1969, the year which is marked for your graduation. And therefore, it is, I think, in keeping with our hopes and our anticipations and our expectations that we think a little bit this afternoon about the class of 69, heirs of a century. And this designation as the centennial class, it seems to me, establishes your identity. It also describes your legacy. And finally, it defines your responsibility. 
Let me say this to you who are the members of the class of 69. You have as a group a particular identity, but that identity does not supersede the importance of your identity as an individual within that class. I want to tell you honestly that we are concerned about each one of you because we know that one of the great problems in education today is to keep the individual student before us and not lose him in the mass, not lose him in the numbers that are inundating our educational institutions today. It is true that great institutions have become what one has called the faceless factories of education, so that students sit down in the lonely crowd and say, nobody knows my name. I can assure you as members of this class that somebody on this campus knows your name. And even though you may feel during these first few days that you're a part of a big amorphous mass, nevertheless, your administration and your faculty and all who are here to serve you want to establish your identity as an individual. But then you are important also as a group, and it's wonderful to be identified with a group, to say, I belong, because next to being a person, we are persons in relation to other people. And it is a wonderful thing to be able to say, I belong to the class of 1969. You are the largest class ever to enroll at Augsburg College. The last figure is something like 478 or 79. You are also the most capable class that has ever enrolled at this institution, if we can go by your rank in high school and by your test scores. These mark you as a class for which we have great expectations. But you are, as I have said, the centennial class, a class which we will follow now during these next four years leading up to 1969 and the 100th commencement, which, God willing, will be your commencement. We have become increasingly aware these last months of our centennial as it approaches in terms of organizing a centennial committee, a centennial commission, a centennial office, looking ahead to marking these 100 years. And behind me today is a banner that has been designed to depict the nature of our institution over these 100 years. You'll notice that it, ha it has a motto through truth to freedom. People are concerned about freedom today. And we believe that the freedom that men need is to be found in the truth, that men are not free until they know the truth, and they are not ultimately free until they know him who is the truth. You will notice also that there are some symbols on this banner. You see the symbol of the lamp which is a universal symbol for knowledge, for learning, for the quest for truth. And we're engaged in this kind of a search. You'll see the skyline of the city, for we are located in a dynamic urban community. And all of you in the future will be living in a society that will be shaped by its metropolitan proportions. And we believe in the relevance of an education that is located in this kind of a situation. You find also above it all the cross, for this is education under the cross here at Augsburg College. On the sides you see two symbols marking our heritage. On the one hand, the lion, symbolic of the Scandinavian country from which the forefathers who the founders of this institution came, and on the other side, the eagle of our own great America. All of this put together in a symbol that you are going to be more and more familiar with because you'll find it on your badges, you'll see it on the banner, and it will become a part of your life as you go through Augsburg College 
the centennial class. So we begin this first day by asking you to set your sights on commencement 1969. Today is a realization of a goal long planned for. Now you begin to set your sights on the next goal. And I hope you will say, like the old song has it, when the roll is called out yonder, I'll be there. I'll be there as a rightful heir of a century. Let me speak for a moment about your legacy of 100 years, the legacy which awaits you during these next four academic years. In a sense, the whole century of Augsburg College is now focused upon you. You have an inheritance waiting for you. Now, an inheritance is not something that you earn, really. It's not something that you pay for. It's not something that is really merited, although you have to prove that you are the one named in the will. There's a sense in which an inheritance is a gift of grace. It's there because somebody else did something for you before you came on the scene. We like to believe that this class has come to Augsburg College for an education. And you will be asked to pay for that education. Unfortunately, the costs of education have risen. And we have to charge for our kind of education. Although I would remind you that even though your bill seems to be quite exorbitant, you are not paying the full cost of your education by any means. Every one of you has a sizable scholarship in terms of the support given this institution by the church, by foundations, by business, by interested friends and alumni, all of whom want you to become inheritors of the legacy of Augsburg College. Now, if you're here just to get an education and to put your money down for that, you get it. You get a good education. I can assure you of that. We have a good faculty. We've got a good curriculum. And I think for our educational purposes, we've got good facilities. Hopefully, we will have in the next few years some better facilities to live in. But educationally, we've got some good facilities. You get what you pay for. And you get a good education. You go to class, you get your grades, you get your credits, you get your diploma. And this will have a monetary value to it. They'll say that now a college education is worth about $160,000 to $180,000 a year in your lifetime. You will have that over those who did not go to college. I say there's no doubt about your getting an education if you want it. But my question this afternoon is, will you receive your inheritance? the legacy that Augsburg has existed nigh unto a century to give to you. What is that legacy? What is this testament, this will? This legacy is, in the first instance, education with a particular purpose. Would you like to know what we're about here at Augsburg? Do you know what we'd like to help you to become? I'm going to level with you and tell you what it is we're about, because I don't want any misunderstanding at this point. I didn't want to want anybody to come and say, well, we didn't know this is what you wanted us to become. Here is what it is. The statement of the model alumnus, the kind of people that we would like to see graduating four years from now in the centennial class of 1969. Let me read it for you. I hope it will become increasingly meaningful as the years go by. The model alumnus, the member of the centennial class of 1969, on graduation day we hope he will be a person who has a mature and enduring concern for the meaning and relevance of the Christian message for his own life, for the life of the church, and for the common life of man in the modern world. A person who has achieved a high degree of self-understanding, being aware of his own limitations and of his unique abilities as an individual person. A person who is genuinely interested in other people and is dedicated to the service of others as an important part of the meaning of his life. 
We hope he will be a person who has been introduced to and is acquainted with the major areas of human knowledge, who is intellectually alive to the point of being enthusiastically committed to a lifelong quest for increasing knowledge and understanding. We want him to be an informed person who has an appreciation of the heritage which informs his life so that he is able to derive genuine enjoyment from such things as art, music, and literature. We want him to be acquainted more or less intimately with the problems and forces affecting the course of history or determining the course of history in our time and is committed to the task of playing a creative and responsible role as a citizen in this kind of world. We want you, the members of this class, to be prepared or to get into the process of becoming prepared for some particular occupation which you will pursue as a Christian vocation and an opportunity for service to God and man. Now there you've got it. There it is. This is what we're about. The legacy of this institution is in terms of this kind of education with this kind of purpose. This legacy is also an education in a great tradition. The tradition of education at Augsburg is one of scholarship. You are here to study. You are here to join with your fellow students and with those who are trained and dedicated to pursue the various facets of knowledge and information that are available to you, that are out of the past our great heritage and are which are still before us waiting for discovery. There are people here who want to lead you out of the narrow confines of your own mind and your own thinking, and all of us are all too narrow, so that you will become a broadly liberally educated, a broad liberally educated person. Now, all of this means that we are just not too concerned about all the frills that are sometimes attached to education was a time, you know, when they thought going to college was just a matter of football, fraternities, and fun. Today, education is concerned with faces, with people, with facts, the great knowledge explosion, and with faith, the deep undergirding convictions that are necessary if education is going to be anything more than just mere cleverness. I remember what Dean Blagan said, a man who headed up the graduate school at the University of Minnesota, himself a distinguished alumnus of Augsburg College. He said, when I went to Augsburg back in those days, the curriculum was very, very limited. But he said, there's one thing I learned to do. I learned to study. This is the tradition at Augsburg. Scholarship is the prime concern. Everything else is secondary to this one thing. And you wouldn't want to go over across the street to one of these hospitals and have them tell you that they have some other interest than just making you well. That's the business of the hospital. You wouldn't want us to tell you that we have any other task here basically than to help you learn and study and become the kind of person that I have described. Your, your legacy, your inheritance, is also an education imbued with a powerful spirit. I believe there is something called the Augsburg spirit. I hope you've caught a little bit of it. If there is a friendliness on this campus, if there is a warmth that you feel, I believe it stems out of the basic character of this institution's spirit, which is a Christian spirit. And in the Christian spirit, we count each individual as a child of God, created by him in his image and redeemed by his love with all of the tremendous potential that God has placed in each one of us. And I like John's reference to the story of the talents because it means that everybody got something to work with. 
The question is, will you work with it? I think there is on this campus an air of acceptance, that we accept each other for what we are, regardless of our background, regardless of uh, our native abilities, regardless of our economic station, regardless of our physical prowess, we are here as those who have a brother. A brother who was one of us, who grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. This is what makes us one. And this is the great spirit of this institution. Part of this legacy is also education based on a genuine faith. We make no apologies for being a Christian institution. A Christian revelation, as has been said, informs our enterprise. We believe God is, but that God cannot be found by man's mind. For man's mind, for all its wonders, has its limits. And God to be known must make himself known. He must come to us. And the great fallacy of the intellectual pursuit is that it can find God with man's own mind. You can't. God finds us in Jesus Christ. And so he has revealed himself, and he's redeemed us, and he's set us free. And he said, I've given you all things freely to enjoy. Now go out and find out all you can. Be all you can. Take into account all you can. Serve all you can. This whole thing belongs to you. You're a part of the household of God. You're princes and princesses in the royal family. Nothing is foreign to you because in Christ all things are yours. We are the Lord's with and without the apostrophe. We have been created to have dominion over this creation. And this is our heritage. And we move out without fear into any area of knowledge and ask all the questions that need to be asked. Because we know where we stand. We know where our starting point is. And we know him with whom we have to do. Finally, the legacy of Augsburg is an education with the only mission which satisfies, and that is the mission to serve mankind. Our former Dean of Students, Dr. Peter Armacost, had a very excellent lecture entitled Education for Service, not a motto but a mandate. You may have many reasons for coming to college, and I'm sure they're all good. If you say, I came to college because I want to be able to earn a living, that's good. All of us must be able to follow some gainful pursuit. If you came to college and said, I want to come here because I want to know. There are things I want to understand. I want to, I want to probe. I want to think. I want to reflect. That's better. Much better. And I think college will be really exciting for you. But if you came here to say and say to yourself, I want to get here, come here in order that not only being trained for a living and not only finding out about all there is to find out about, but I'm here to serve and become a channel of blessing in this world, then I think that's the best. Because that's in the tradition of the teacher whose symbol was also the towel and the basin and who girded himself and knelt down and washed the sweaty feet of his learners of his disciples. This is your legacy. You are mentioned in this will. You now have a responsibility to probate that legacy. I looked up that word probate. You know, whenever there's a will or a testament left, a, a, a legacy, it has to go to probate court. And we use a word kind of like that around Augsburg at any institution of learning. They call it probation. Now, please stay off the probation list. That's not a good place to be at all. But probation means you're on trial. And to probate a, a will means that those who are mentioned therein have to prove 
that they are indeed the rightful heirs, that they are the persons mentioned in the will. And the years ahead provide you with your chance to prove your right to this inheritance. Now, <clears throat> unfortunately, we can predict what is going to happen in this class of 1969. There will be some failures. There will be some academic funerals. One is sorry to have to say this. It must be stated that this will not be because you did not have what it takes intellectually, because we have let you in here on the premise that you have proven you can do the work required of you in college. There'll be some other reason if there's failure. It'll be in your attitude. It'll be in your lack of motivation. It'll be in your picking up the wrong habits and getting into the wrong crowd. And may I say for the benefit of, your, of the parents who are here, don't think that this is a kind of a secluded, separated, segregated place where there are no temptations and where the devil isn't active, and where there are not people who can lead others astray. This is no different than any other situation, be it in the community or in your congregation or wherever it is. Nobody's going to be shielded from anything. They're going to have to make their own choices. And that's where the crux lies. What will your choices be? Some will be failures. Some will be misfits. Their conduct, their attitude, their relationships will develop to a degree where they just don't fit. Now, I hope that will not be the case with any of you, but it happens all the time. And it would be for your own good then that you no longer continued in the community. Some of you will become exes so that when the alumni office lists the class of 69, they will have X69, meaning you were here for a while and then left for some reason or other. Some of you will leave for good reasons. Some of you for not such good reasons. But my challenge is to the majority of the class of 69 seated here today to prove your right to your inheritance. Set your sights now on the highest distinction which you can have from this institution. Not that you are just a graduate, but that you are an Augie, an Augsburgian, if you please, in the full meaning of that term, a legitimate heir, heir of all that the century of sacrifice, struggle, dedication, and hope would bequeath to you. Yours is the opportunity, made possible by parents, by church, by college, by community. You have abilities that other people do not have, and they don't make it into college. You have the talents. You have a chance that others wish they had and have not gotten or can never have. And I would like to close this afternoon by telling you of someone who might have been sitting with you this afternoon. His name is Terry Engel. Terry was called into the Air Force and served in Vietnam. But he was more than an Air Force mechanic. He was a young chap with great ideals. And when he went into the city of Saigon, he saw all these little Vietnamese children running around on the streets, nobody teaching them how to read and write. And this chap who'd never gone to college used to get on an airplane that ran into Saigon early in the morning after he had worked the night shift and gathered scores of these little children together to teach them how to read and write. And I saw a story on Terry Engel in the Saigon Daily News telling about the kind of work he was doing. Then he'd get back on a bus and ride all the way back to the Air Force Air, the airstrip there where he worked, he'd get a little sleep, work, and then go back and teach these youngsters. And the last line in that 
particular article said, when he gets out of the Air Force, he hopes to enroll at Augsburg College. And one of those bombings occurred out there in Saigon. He was unhurt. But he went in after some people who were, and he was killed in the second explosion. He wanted to be here. He couldn't be. We have a responsibility to these and to all who believe in this kind of education and who have given themselves to making it possible for you to be the heirs of a century. We look forward to many happy days together here at Augsburg. Thank you very much.